Hey there, everybody, and today I want to talk to you about a little something that I call filling in the blanks. Hey there, everybody, my name is Dave, aka Mindset by Dave, and I have been a mindset and mental health coach for the last four years, helping people with mindset, mental health, personal development, and whatever else it might be that is holding them back up here. As well as creating videos here on YouTube, I also stream live over on twitch.tv slash mindset by Dave every Tuesday in the daytime from 10 a.m. till 4 p.m., and every Saturday in the evening from 7 p.m. till 10 p.m. There's also a Discord, which information is linked down below and up on screen right now if you want to talk about these things when I'm not streaming. Anyway, on with the content. So filling in the blanks is essentially when our brain creates a part of a story based on limited information. And the one that I want to use with it is the difference between these two devices, the good old landline, the house phone and the mobile phone. Now, if we think back to when we just had the landline and we'd phone somebody, if they didn't answer, the first thing that we would assume is that they were busy or they were out or they were on the toilet because believe it or not, there was a time we didn't take the phone in there with us. And if we called them on that, that's what we assumed. And we'd put the phone down if they didn't answer and we'd go back to getting on with our day, doing whatever it was that we enjoy and almost forget the whole thing until we saw that person again. Then when this thing comes along, the whole thing changed because when we phone someone on the mobile phone and they don't answer, the first thing we think is, well, even the most positive thing we might think is that they're screening us, but a lot of people actually go into, they hate me, they've got a problem with me. What was I doing the last time I actually spoke to this person? We create this whole version where it is about you and you being the problem, when it could just be that that person is playing video games with a set of noise cancelling headphones on. But when we do this, when we think that the problem is with us, we don't go back to getting on with things the way that we did when we phoned a person on the house phone. We start to tell ourselves this story and we start to torture ourselves with it. Now, it doesn't actually matter what the other person is doing. What we think they are doing creates this story and creates the emotional reaction that we have to it. And it'd be bad enough if it stopped there, but for the vast majority of us, it goes a little bit further. Once we go beyond the call, we pick up the phone again, we head over to WhatsApp and we send that message, you know, hey, been trying to get hold of you, how's things going? Give me a shout when you get this. And then we send it and we get that one gray tick, we get the two gray ticks, and then we get the two blue ticks. And now we've got a little bit more information. We know that they've seen it. With before, when you're phoning them, they might not have seen the missed call. And we can just about hold that together. Whereas now we know they've seen it. So we're like, they're going to reply. They're going to reply. And we may find ourselves looking at our phones every few seconds, can being completely and utterly distracted from what we're doing in order to see whether this message has come through. We think as if, oh, maybe the notification's not come through. Maybe it's not buzzed. Maybe I just didn't hear it. And just check. And then everything that we are becomes about getting that response. And again, It'd be bad enough if we stopped there, but some of us would go on to social media and particularly things like Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat where they have a story. Well, look at what the person's doing right now, who the person's with right now. And then if we see that they're out with someone that we consider to be an absolute pain in the backside, we'd be like, oh my God, not only do they hate me, but they like that idiot more than me. And that person is just a complete and utter moron. And now we have a little bit more information again, which actually creates an even worse story for ourselves. We're definitely not going back to just getting on with things, enjoying our lives. We're fuming. We're kind of letting this entire thing consume us. Now on the flip side to this, have you ever received a message from somebody and maybe you're kind of in the middle of doing the dishes and you open it up and it says, you know, something that requires more of a response than a quick yes or no. And then you put the phone down and think, you know what? I'll reply to that later, but the notification's gone. Or maybe you've just been about to get in the car and drive and you think to yourself, I'll reply to that when I stop. But because the notification's gone, have you ever forgotten? It wasn't because you hated the person or that you'd rather be with somebody else. It was because once the notification is gone, it goes out of our minds. We don't remember every single thing that we needed to get back to people about. We rely nowadays on the notifications to do that. But rather than it being because you hated the person that you've not responded, 
it's because you felt that they deserved a worthwhile answer. Now imagine what it would be like on the other end of this if when we send that message to someone else, we assume the same. Instead of assuming that they hate us and therefore that obsessing over that becoming the thing that we centralize our lives around, imagine if we just thought, well, they're busy, they'll get back to me when they get a chance to. And just like back in the days of the home phone, we put the phone down and we just go back to enjoying our lives. Now I use this example here because it's one that chances are you have lived through. But we do this a lot. We tell ourselves stories and we make assumptions on information that is out there based on a limited amount of evidence. And sometimes the more of that evidence we get, the worse the story becomes instead of actually feeling more at ease. So I just want you to be aware of this. And I also want you to be aware of the fact that your mind will default towards one of the most negative outcomes. The person hates me. So when that feeling comes through, we sometimes have to rationalize with that and actually override that thought, remind ourselves that maybe the person's just busy, maybe they just forgot to reply to the message. Because once we take it out of the equation to, they're busy, they'll get back to me, and take it away from, I'm the problem, we're gonna enjoy life a lot better. As always, I hope this video has helped and if it has or any of the other videos on this channel, please do hit that subscribe button. Maybe even like, comment, share this video. Those things genuinely make such a massive difference to me that you wouldn't even believe it. Those simple actions that you can take mean the absolute world to me. As I always say, it is priceless to you, but it is priceless to me. And again, remember 7 p.m. till 10 p.m. on a Saturday, 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. on a Tuesday over at twitch.tv slash Mindset by Dave and the Discord for everything in between. I think that covers it all and I will see you next time.